Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the class. This is now my second take of this lesson. Um, and that's a bit annoying, uh, well, for you, or for me more so, but maybe for you. Uh, the first take was really good, but uh, my phone just cut out. <laughs> uh, I think the storage maxed out. Anyway, I've sorted that, so hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully I can do something good in take two, but man, it's probably the best I've taught ever. Um, you know, so I'm not saying it's great, I'm saying it's important in the sense that it was the, it's the best I've ever done, so it's the best I can do, right? Um, that's the best anyone can ever do. Imagine doing that. Uh, you know, your best run, your best solo, your best uh, lasagna, I don't know, whatever. Uh, cool. Uh, right, I'm gonna try and play this now. Uh, this. This is a song uh, called Diaspora by uh, Christian Scott, although I think it's possible that it was composed uh, in part or in full by Elena Pinderhues also. Uh, I couldn't, uh, just before making the video, I couldn't get to the bottom of this. This is not, uh, it's from a record called Diaspora, uh, which is a record uh, that I don't have. So um, there we go. It's a record I should have because uh, I should support Christian Scott. Uh, financially more, um, one, because I can, and two, because uh, I think his music is worthy of my money, <laughs> basically, it's worthy of everybody's money. Um, I, I love Christian Scott's band and his music and what he has to say about stuff, um, and his trumpet playing is, well, it's just insane, as the saying goes. Uh, okay, um, the interesting thing about this song is I tried to transcribe it or work it out yesterday and I couldn't, um, I couldn't do it, I kind of hit the wall, I got really sad, you know, a bit depressed with myself, uh, or depressed, or, is that the right thing? Anyway, and that's an unfamiliar kind of place to be for me, uh, I don't normally, uh, kind of feel those kind of things too much, uh, Got good mechanisms for for getting around that, but I was cross because here I am making all these, uh, you know, videos like this and trying to teach you guys to do it for yourselves and gain confidence in doing it. And yesterday I tried to get the B section of this, you know, relatively harmonically straightforward tune, and I just couldn't. Um, anyway, what I did was I then went and uh, worked out two Robert Glasper songs that had also been eluding me you know, years or months previous, or ones that I hadn't done anyway. Uh, so I worked those out, and that was kind of, maybe that was the cure. Uh, so I did those two yesterday night, and then um, I came back today, and I, I've just now uh, worked this out. Uh, this is all, you know, in the last 15 minutes. Um, it is uh, it's Thursday, the 4th of June, and it's now about 20 to 3. Uh, okay, so... Uh, yeah, I've written this out uh, in G flat major. I know F sharp major would uh, be normally how you would do that, um, but um, I've written it out in G flat. One, because I prefer flats and it's my chart and so I've done that. Two, I'm aware of the eccentricity of doing that perhaps. And three, it's a track by a trumpeter and the trumpet is in the key of B flat and maybe I've just got a bit of flat bias where that's concerned. Uh, okay. Um, any excuse to have flats for me. Um, so, uh, yeah. What did I want to say about the music? You know, is this idea simple? think it is. I think it's really amazing and I don't think it's easy 
to come up with something that good or you know it's a small idea in some ways it's not like a big long symphony or a big uh, expansive uh, piece of music it's just like a small little thing but it feels great it feels like a world to me It feels like a beat and beats feel like that maybe that's one of the reasons i love uh beat driven music or music that has loops or things like that because it kind of it feels like a whole world and that just feels like the entire universe like uh you know encapsulated or housed within uh that small bit of music which is great so there's a lesson or some food for thought for you guys you know are you really crafting uh, ideas or can you come up with something uh, which is like a seed which is really potent which could grow into like a massive person or, or like oak tree or something I don't know. sorry um, cool uh, so right this is what I couldn't work out and the silly thing is is it's just not that difficult uh, I've expressed it here with some slash chords, and you could. There's an alternative to that, but it's essentially what was eluding me was um, the roller coaster of love by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. That's a questionable music video, if ever I remember one. Um, I think it's got Beavis and Butthead in it. Uh, that's a 90s TV show, for those of you that can't remember that. Um, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I can remember it. Um, okay. Uh, right. So, there's I've put A over B. So, A over B is A major over B. And A, C sharp, and E over B. Which goes to B flat minor 7, which is going to be... And that's kind of like the passing chord, or it's at the end there, which is why I put it in brackets there. Okay, B flat, A flat, D flat, and F. You can put a B flat on the top, and another A flat if you want. You can put an E flat in there, but let's take it out. B flat, A flat, D flat, F, B flat, B flat, minus seven. Okay, D flat over E flat. Let's build it up from uh, the bottom, actually. E flat, D flat, F natural, A flat. Yeah, A flat minor. Is it A flat minor 9? That's a good question. A flat minor 9. Uh, <laughs> yes. It is. Good. Uh, that's good news. Um, now, this one's awkward. C flat over D flat. D flat's in the bass. So, sorry, we're on that. A flat minor. The chord goes here. Uh, which sounds, when you play it like that, as a like a slash chord. Uh, it's very similar to the other chord, the last chord, the previous chord rather. Uh, D flat in the bass, C flat, E flat, and G flat. So C flat major over D flat. Uh, you could, of course, express that as D flat 13 sus in the same way that you could express this chord here as E flat 13 sus and this one as B 13 sus. Okay, let me just explain what I mean by B 13 sus. Okay. And I'll do it on that chord because that's the chord I couldn't hear, which chromatically moves there. It's funny how you just hit the wall sometimes. I couldn't see it, I couldn't hear it. I could hear the bass, but it just wasn't, for some reason, there was just some kind of block in the way, some kind of roadblock. Um, good. Right. Um, so, that's B, and that's A. So that's the minor 7, so A is the minor 7 away from B, so it already could be a dominant 7th uh, chord. Okay, the C sharp is the ninth. okay, the E natural is the 11th, and that G sharp is the 13th. Okay, so the only thing it doesn't have is uh, a D sharp. Uh, so now, that's what you would call uh, B 
flat 13. Sorry, B13. Beg your pardon. Yeah. Um, so it's a dominant chord, but it's but it's sus because we don't have that B sharp and the E's there in place, which is the fourth uh, or the eleventh, depending. And, you know, it's far from the most challenging set of chords that I featured during these uh, videos in lockdown, but I just couldn't do it. But anyway, there it is. Um, granted, this might not be to the letter of the law. Hold that thought, um, as you know. But ultimately, I'm not particularly interested in that. This works for me. It works in my mind. The sounds are pretty much right. And it's a reasonably valid way of expressing it, you know, valid enough that I could put it out to you guys and feel confident with it. Okay. Um, I think the good news is that this video is shorter than the first one would have ended up. Um, the bad news is it's not as good. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. That's a shame. Okay. Um, right. Uh, I can prove something hopefully or try to here I mean you guys are interested in uh, you know these kind of things I, I, I think um, this is what happens when you google uh, Christian Scott diaspora that's the tune tutorial uh, you don't get one okay lots of music has tutorials online some of them excellent some of them not so much do I really think that no, I think generally speaking, the world of like song tutorials online is not great. Uh, there's lots of great music tuition online, but not necessarily songs. Um, that's the thing. Uh, but anyway, what you can see is that I've not watched somebody else's tutorial and passed that off as my own. That's not a thing that I would do, you know. Uh, nor have I taken anyone else's transcription and passed that off as my own. That's not a thing I would do. Sometimes I do use other people's transcriptions, but I always tell you when I do that. Um, you can see that, you know, there there isn't one there. We get Christian Scott's Bandcamp and a magazine interview and a transcription of Elena Pinterhue's Lick on Christian blah, 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 blah. It's from the album, but it's not the song. And what I can tell you uh, is that if it was there, it would come up in the first couple of hits. So you get some videos and, and what have you. Um, so hopefully that's that's useful in terms of you uh, trusting me in promoting teaching you these skills uh, I have worked this out for myself from a position of not being able to do so in general and then yesterday just not being able to do it because my brain didn't work uh, and today my brain works or what have you anyway time's ticking on for all of us so um you know, let's watch it. If you don't like the music, uh, that's a shame, but chances are you've already switched off uh, if that were the case. Um, personally, I think the value of, of watching this is, is, is colossal. Welcome to Pace Studios. We are pleased to present one of the most exciting talents and creative forces on the Genesis. Great to see today. his basketball allegiance is uh, wearing the Christian Chicago Scott Bulls. Those look like a really expensive pair of uh, sneakers too. Are they Jordans? They might be. It's Marcus Gilmore on drums.
like the snare drum sound. I hope you agree. Well, we're gonna stick around. It's it's worth watching uh, the soloing for sure. You know, like I said, I'm wor working on the basis that uh, you might have switched off already if it wasn't to a liking. play with could I play with those guys uh, well not really but um, anyway it's, like I said it's starting to feel a bit better okay uh, cool uh, so we've just got time for uh, one more thing uh, one of the things you've noticed this week is that I have not uh, been uh, abstaining from <laughs> putting out content or what have you uh, which lots of creators and providers and record labels and bands and what have you have been doing um, you know and lots of the musicians that, that we've uh, featured here that I featured here have done I noticed Biff Week Clyra are observing it uh, that's one band uh, that you might not have necessarily immediately associated with the movement that's going on this week in, in, in America but um, yeah check this out uh, we talked a little bit about YouTube comments. Uh, there are 247 on this video, which is um, on, there are lots and lots of different versions of this on the internet, but this is on the Paste Magazine uh, uh, YouTube channel on the full, full session. And the first comment here is an open letter to Christian Scott uh, from six months ago by Arthur Joe, whoever Arthur Joe is. Uh, it's a long letter. Um, and bearing in mind this is six months ago and he's it's a really I, I mean I'm not going to read it to you all now but I urge you you know what I am going to read it to you uh, dear Christian it's long overdue but we have only the present this is my moment to say thank you 
to you and the other bright fiery stars that make this soulful, culturally sensitive and historically rich music, which is supplemented by an introspective form of commentary that our generation desperately needs, especially the general population in America. Well, that's quite a posh sentence. It's long. Uh, during your Tiny Desk concert, you tell the phenomenal story uh, of your encounter with racial profiling. In excruciatingly clear detail, you explain the feeling of being wrongfully accused, publicly demeaned, and threatened for no reason other than the fact you happen to be a black man in America, and a successful one to boot, which, as you are articulate, evidently makes you even more of a target. Living in London... I have to say the problem exists here as well, but not on such a large scale and not in such an overt way. Still, as a white person with a certain amount of privilege, I cannot personally hope to understand the depths of the issue and the toll that it takes on the people in the UK and the US. And yet, during your speech, he's talking about the tiny desk from years ago, I came closer to than ever before to comprehending the feeling in my body and the pain and injustice that has become a daily part of the black man's uh, psychological and physical experience in America, and to an extent certain parts of the UK too. After all, it was not very long ago that the Mayor of London, sorry, our our Mayor of London, approved using uh, approved of using I beg your pardon, guys, approved of using racial profiling to tackle knife crime in the capital. The greatest difference is that your average British police officer doesn't carry a firearm, which I'm eternally grateful for. The great, the second greatest difference is that the degree of fear between white cops and black citizens in England is nothing compared to the fear that seems to be bleeding America dry, to be sucking the beauty out of existence for so many young men across every state in the country, many of whom have enough problems to contend with besides being seen as a villain by the very people whose job it is to protect them. Sorry, that was... the punctuation there was not great. I will carry on. Uh, how did we reach this position? The soul of society is waning in America and the UK is trailing behind. Uh, you seem to provide one uh, of the most apt and thoughtful solutions to the problem without pretending to have all the answers. Uh, regarding how we reach this point, you deal with the ugly aspects of life uh, in your country by addressing them verbally and non-verbally through your songs in a way that is not maligned by any ill feelings towards anyone in particular. You see through the trees and recognise that it is the trappings of society at large, the institutions that shape the nation, which perpetuate and sustain the fear dividing otherwise connected bodies. Your music takes viewers and listeners through stages of transcendence, from a place of pain through a position of unwavering hope and fortitude. Simultaneously, almost, you ignite the despair and the optimism and strength required to walk through injustice and forge a settlement built on mutual trust peace and sensitivity. I truly believe that you are a trailblazer, musically and culturally. Your music has and will continue to provide experience to people uh, the people need to take stock, to reflect, to gather the courage required to progress, and finally to work collectively towards a position where compassion triumphs over fear. It is music that connects us to our environment when we are most lost, most isolated. And it is your music specifically that does this time and time again in a singular manner. Again, thank you for your vision and your grace in articulating it. I am not one for idolising others, but you are a, a remarkable man. And anyone who has the opportunity to hear your rhythms would be better off as a result. Thank you. Um, that's a pretty good YouTube comment. Uh, and it seems to make... Uh, great sense uh, this week uh, of all weeks um, you know some sentence structuring apart I think you know that is really well written well it is really well written um, but you know we're always supposed to even if it's great writing we're always supposed to comment on the uh, on, on the, the grammar um, okay uh, sorry um, cool uh, I think, you know, well, you guys know what I think uh, this video serves as uh, my contribution, you know, towards thinking about these things. Uh, I have a duty, I feel, to uh, promote that with you guys. Um, cool. Um, this was sponsored by Politically Motivated YouTube Content.